I started by contacting the Koala Hospital to ask if they would be interested in having a student animation created for them. They were very excited by the idea and kept in constant contact with me throughout the production. I created a very basic animation that contained the narrative and the key scenes in the production. I used the documentation from the software including Autodesk documentation and the VES handbook for a guide on the correct stereo setup. My main competitive frame were Blinky Bill the movie from 2015 depicting a koala and an infographic on deforestation and the effect it has on the koalas. I sourced a lot of competitive works in the low poly style and used aspects of each different style in my own work. To keep the production on track I constructed and followed a production plan and pipeline. The original 2D design for the koala exaggerated the koala's cutest features such as their ears and rounded faces. After modelling the koala based off the 2D design, I recreated the koala model using a live surface and quad draw to create a low poly style model. The low poly style was new to me and I had to carefully design the topology in a way where the koala would still be stylized but be able to deform without losing volume. Look development for the koala led to the reduction in the ear size, replacing the 2D textured face with the 3D models and rig, and making the face plumper and shortening the body. The final koala design used a 1K texture to mimic the typical koala coloration and add character to the model such as adding rosy cheeks and a large nose. The koala rig had a lot of ability with facial controls, hand and finger controls, IK and FK arms and legs, and IK ear controls that could be used to convey emotion through ear position. The lumberjack model was created from what I had learnt modelling the koala. Using limited topology I was able to create a humanoid character that kept volume as it deformed. The rig for the lumberjack was simpler than the koala's. It had IK arms and legs, head controls and constraint switches for holding and letting go of the chainsaw and pot plant. The other rigs used were a chainsaw rig that had a rotation chain and was able to be constrained and scaled with the lumberjack and a tree which had set driven keys for falling and breaking. All models created in the low poly style and triangulated mesh to match the characters. To create the moving water I used a noise texture plugged into a texture deformer that changed with time to create a wave effect. I experimented with different renderers and styles and ultimately decided on using Maxwell Render as a physically based renderer, looked better and had more aesthetic control. I experimented with different coloured backgrounds by testing the colours on people and found the light blue colour matched more nicely with the scene and was a relaxing colour. I used reference footage to animate the lumberjack to have correct body posture and movement when walking and carrying a heavy item. I used a lot of footage to animate the koala, adding koala eating and sleeping positions. I chose to animate the koala as a biped, resulting in a less accurate walk for the koala. I used a number of dynamic objects in the production, including particle effects for the chainsaw exhaust, particles for debris and end cloth for the boat. I used Maxwell Grass and Scatter Instance to quickly instance rocks and trees across the surface of objects, which decreased render times and increased viewport efficiency. I set up the stereo cam and animated the zero parallax and the interaxial separation to create a more immersive stereoscopic animation that contained depth suitable for a cinema screen. I incorporated multi-light into my production workflow in Maxwell Render that allowed me to alter the light and camera settings post render and after effects. Using Deadline I was able to save 75 days worth of rendering had I been using only one machine at one frame at a time. This amassed to a finished production to a production sample level in only 4 days. All the particles and backgrounds were rendered separately and composited into the scene in After Effects. I mixed the audio into 5.1 surround sound that contained immersive surround panning for tracking characters in the 3D space.